Hello everyone. In this discussion, we are going to look at how we can draw a shear force and bending moment diagrams for a beam that has a mixture of different magnitudes of uniformly distributed loads and point loads. The guiding question says draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the beam shown below. Indicate all the numerical values at important sections. We have a beam which is uh, simply supported as shown below with an overhang from B uh, to the extreme end. Uh, we have a reaction at A and a reaction at B. Then we have a uniformly distributed of 1000 newton per meter from A to C. Then we have a point load of 8000 newtons at C. We have a point load of 4000 newtons at D. And we have a uniformly distributed load of 1600 newton per meter from B to the extreme end of the beam. And the distances at which these forces are acting on the beam are also as indicated. Let's go and look at how we can tackle this problem by first computing uh, the reactions at A and the reaction at B. So let's consider this free body diagram and uh, this is going to be 1 kN. I have divided all these forces by 1000 so I will have my forces uh, being obtained in kilonewtons, not in newton per meter. This is 1.6 kilonewton per meter. Now, we are going to indicate the reaction at A as AY, the reaction at B as BY, and then we apply conditions of static equilibrium, uh, which includes uh, summation of forces in the x direction should be equal to zero, sum of forces in the y direction or in the vertical direction should be equal to zero, uh, then the sum of moments about a point should also equal to zero. Now, the forces that are acting in the, uh, in the x direction are not there, so we shall not calculate for reactions in the x direction. But uh, how about in the vertical direction, we have ay plus by. So by uh, plus ay is equal to the downward forces, which are the 1 kN per meter time. Now, the distance over which it is acting, and this is fine. So this force of 1 kN per meter results into a total force of 5 times 1 uh, to get 5 kN, and it acts at the center of this uniformly distributed load. Uh, then, whereas the other one is... Uh, a 1.6 kN per meter acting at a distance, acting over a distance of 2.5. So it will be 2.5 times 1.6 uh, kN. Then it is acting also at the center, so it means I will, uh, I will have 1.25 meters and 1.25 meters from the center. Okay, we proceed and write down our equations. So Upward forces are equal to downward forces, so Ay plus By will equal to 5 plus 8 plus 4 plus the 2.5 times 1.6, which is 4, to give you uh, Ay plus By equal to 21 kN. We call that equation 1. Then we apply the next uh, condition of static equilibrium, taking moments about A, it will be 5. Uh, this 5 kN times the distance at which it is acting from A, which will be 2.5 plus 8 times 5 uh, plus 4 times the distance at which it is acting from A, which is 7.5 plus that force 2.5 times 1.6 times the distance at which it is acting. It is acting at a distance of 12.5 plus 1.25. So... That will be 13.75. Okay, let, let's just do the mathematics. 12.5 plus 1.25. So this becomes 13.75 meters. So this is equal to By, which is acting in an anticlockwise direction. By times 12.5. So if I use my calculator, I find that I have... 5 times 2.5 plus 8 times 5 
plus 4 times 7.5 plus 4 times 13.75 so i divide by 12.5 and i will have my by equal to i will have my by as 13 137.5 divided by 12.5 and uh, this is going to equal to this is equal to 11 so from 1 my ay will therefore equal to 21 minus 11 which gives us 10 kilonewtons let's proceed and now having calculated our reactions we insert them this is a and we know the reaction at a is 10 kilonewtons now we are going to use the method of sections to calculate uh, the bending moments and shear forces as we proceed from the left hand side of our beam so at a distance of zero uh, le less or equal to x less or equal uh, less five uh, then if we bring it in here we see we are going to draw our um, we are going to create a section you know you have to look at the, your beam everywhere you see a discontinuation or a discontinuity you give it a section like now i see from a to c i have only a uniformly distributed load so i can put a section between a and c after c i see there is a, a force of eight kilonewtons then it means i will have to put uh, another section here to reach uh, this one this four kilonewton after i have jumped it i need to put a section so that i know what is happening between d and the rest then like that like that and i'll be able to get the expressions for shear force and bending moment then it's from those ones that i can um, be able to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram now if i consider that section between a and c that is um, a c and we are looking at the distance between 0 and less 5. Now, if I draw it, I still know that I have a uniform redistributed load, uh, which will uh, run up to 5, but I, because I want to determine what is happening between 0 and 5, I will cut it before I reach a 5, meaning I still have a portion that contains also part of this section S. So what will happen is that I have to indicate my forces that are known, the reaction at the A which is 10, then when I cut it at that point I have a shear force going down and the bending moment M that are unknown. Then I have a force which is uniformly distributed uh, since uh, I have created the section at X distance then that uniformly distributed load of one kilonewton per meter, the total load now as a result of that will be one times x. So that force will act at the center from A to the end of the section and the center will be x out of two from A. Also x out of two from this other x. So I have to put in uh, uh, conditions of static equilibrium vertical forces are equal to downward forces i mean upward forces are equal to downward forces meaning that uh, my 10 should equal to uh, x times 1 which becomes x then plus v meaning that I'm clearly okay 10 is equal to x plus v so meaning that my v instead is going to equal to negative x plus 10 okay i proceed i want to look at the moments now the moments become moments become i have m in the anti-clockwise direction then i have x and v so this will equal to v is in the, the clockwise direction so i'll have vx then plus x which is that force acting at the center then times the distance from the extreme end so it will become x out of 2. So this finally becomes m. My x here, my v is negative x plus 10. So I will have minus x squared, then plus 10x, uh, then plus 
x squared out of 2. So what is m? m finally gives us uh, minus x squared plus a half. I will get minus a half uh, x squared then plus 10x. This is equation 2. I proceed to this section of 5 uh, less or equal to x less 7.5. So that I will see what happens after going beyond a distance of 5 meters where I meet the 8 kN. Mm -hmm. uh, upward forces are equal to downward forces. I see that 5 plus 8 plus V will equal to 10. So my shear force becomes negative 3 kN. Uh, the other one was equation 3, so I call this, I mean equation 2, this becomes equation 3. Then I go to the bending moment, uh, all the other forces are acting in a clockwise direction and the bending moment at that point at the section is in the anti-clockwise direction. So uh, I will have my Vx plus 5 times 2.5. Uh, this is uh, what I'm talking about. 5 times 2.5 plus 8 times 5. So what is M? M is equal to, uh, this is um, 5 times 2.5, then plus 40. This is uh, now minus 3x plus 52.5. Because my V is negative 3. So I call 4. Go to that section between 7.5 and 12.5. What does it contain? It is here. Uh, it contains the, um, the 5 kN. Okay, it contains that section uh, from C to D. Let me see. Okay, the 7.5 to 12.5 uh, contains... This one, this is 7.4, it is D to B. So wherever there is a discontinuity, I need to determine what is the bending moment and the shear force here. So I will have A, C, D. So that's what I'm talking about. I come here, I'm saying I have A here, C, C, K. Uh -huh. What do we do? We have uh, to apply the conditions of static equilibrium. So upward forces are equal to downward forces to get the shear force. So that will be um, 5 plus uh, 8 plus 4 which gives you 17 plus V and uh, this will equal to 10. Therefore my V is equal to uh, 10 minus 17 gives you negative 7 kilonewtons. Then what is the bending moment? The bending moment will now be, I have a 5 times 2.5, those are clockwise moments. Then 8 times 5 plus 4 times 7.5 plus Vx is equal to M, which is in the anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, this gives me maybe equation 5 and negative 7x plus 82.5 is the bending moment between... D and B. And this is maybe equation 6. So we go to the last section of 12.5 and 15. So 12.5 less X less 15. So what happens? I also indicate that I have uh, Where I put my section, it will be at a distance x from the extreme end. This is A, this is C, this is D, and uh, this is B. Okay, so we want to see now between B up to the end of the beam, what is the bending moment and what is the shear. So the sum of forces in the upward direction should equal the sum of forces in the downward direction. So V plus 5 plus 8 plus 4 plus 10, I mean 1.6. Okay, if we create uh, point B here, remember this point B has been there and there is a uniformly distributed road from B to the extreme end. If we say from A to where we have put our section uh, is the distance X, 
Then we know uh, this one as 5 meters, we know 2.5, we know 5. So that becomes 12.5, meaning this portion that remains becomes x minus 12.5. So that x minus 12.5 is now that distance where there is a uniformly distributed load of 1.6 kN per meter. So if it is x minus 12.5, it means the total load will be uh, 1.6 times x minus 12.5. Huh? So what will be the distance at which it is going to be acting? This will be x minus 12.5 out of 2. Then also x minus 12.5 out. Okay, because we said it is uniformly distributed. And if I get the total load, that total load due to that UDL is going to act at the center. And the center of x minus 12.5 is x minus 12.5 divided by 2 from B and from where our section is. So we total up the forces. This will be V plus 5 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1.6 times uh, x minus 12.5. This is equal to 10 and 11. So if I use my calculator here, this is uh, 13. Okay. 13 plus 4, it becomes it becomes 17 okay 17 remember uh 17 minus uh, this 12.5 times 1.6 gives you 20 12.5 times 1.6 gives us 20 so this is a uh, um minus 20 if i add there my 17 i'll remain with negative 3 so negative 3 um, this will be V minus 3 equal to 21. Uh, 21, then remember, I had the, this 1.6x. So if I put them to the other side, becomes uh, 21 plus 3 minus 1 point. So what is my V? My V therefore becomes negative 1.6x plus 24 and maybe this is equation 7. So let us look at the bending moment. Now the bending moment uh, that M is in the anticlockwise direction. The 11 uh, at B is also in the anticlockwise direction. The rest are in the clockwise direction. Therefore that's why. I have M plus 11 times 12.5 equaling to 1.6, okay, equal to 1.6 into X minus 12.5 times, the, now the distance from where it is acting, it is going to act at 12.5, uh, then plus, plus a half of X minus 12.5. Okay, then we add, we add there, now the 4 times 7.5 plus 8 times 5 plus 5.5. So we have uh, plus 4 times 7.5 plus, I said, a 5 times 2 uh, times uh, 2.5. Then plus we have eight times five plus eight times five. So what does this mean? I will have M, which will be if I transfer this one to the other side, it will become I have eleven times twelve point five. This becomes negative one thirty seven point five. Uh huh. Then I have I have also um, uh, forty plus five times two point five plus four times seven point five. This is uh, plus eighty two point five. Then plus 
now I have 1.6 times this so I can uh, make some algebra here so that I have 0 0.8 into x uh, plus 12.5 times x minus 12 I'm just putting uh, this out of 2 everything out of 2 so this becomes uh, 25 okay plus x minus 12.5 which becomes 12 x plus 12.5 so if i multiply by this becomes x minus 12.5 uh, of course then times a half times 1.6 which becomes 0 0.8 times that mm -hmm. if we simplify this what does it become i have m which becomes what uh, this becomes a difference of two squares, so it will be 0 0.8 times x squared, uh, then minus 12.5 squared. Then I multiply by 0 0.8. What does that become? I'll have uh, 12.5 squared. Then I multiply by 0 0.8. I get 125. So 125, I add there 82 okay it will be a minus it will be a minus so this becomes maybe let me write the whole expression so it becomes 0 0.8 x squared okay okay remember we had the let me see if there is any other force okay we had the forgotten the vx plus vx so remember our v was a negative 1.6 x so we uh, we multiply by x it becomes that plus 24 so this will be plus 24 x then minus what i'm going to get going to get uh, this is actually minus because this is 0 0.8 uh, x squared minus 1.6 x squared which becomes 0 0.8 then plus 24x then i have minus 137.5 then plus 82.5 then minus 15 so this gives me 180 so this is equation 8 okay so now i go to drawing the shear force and bending moment diagram so this is a uh, a free body diagram this is a shear force diagram bending diagram how do i draw the shear force diagram i look at the between a and c what is the expression between a and c between a and c what is the expression the expression is um minus x plus 10 it means it is a line of uh, a straight line with a negative gradient that runs uh, from uh, 0 to 5 so we are going to put at x is equal to 0 negative x remember we have negative x plus 10 so at x is equal to 0 it means my v is going to be 10 the shear force is going to be 10 then i put in at x is equal to 5 it will be 5 so i just joined the two points five uh, 10 and 5 but with with a ruler with a it is a straight line uh, uh, so with a negative gradient then we again check between c and d between c and d what is the equation for the bending uh, for the shear force for the shear force uh, so between b and c it is negative 3 so i go on my diagram so i have also v equal to negative three so i just go down and mark negative three so what i will do i'll just join the two points uh, the five that i had here and the negative the negative three is constant up to d uh, up to d up to d remember here we have uh, made it eight kilonewtons this is 1.6 kilonewtons per meter then this is 4 kilonewtons this is 1.0 then this is 1 point. okay that is finished then i draw my straight line going to d then i also check at d uh, that is between 
from actually from 5 to 12.5 what is what is that value of uh, of shear force so i go to this 7.5 i will see that i have a negative 7 so i have negative 7 so i go down here and mark my negative 7 so after I have stopped there, I just joined these two points, okay? Because the shear force diagram must be complete. But even if I didn't want to use that, I can look at this being negative 3 when it becomes a constant. When it reaches here, I meet a 4. So I just move 4 downwards. So when I move 4 downwards from negative 3, I will be at negative 7. Then I move because it is constantly up to B. Then it is from B that I will have to ascertain what is what is now happening. Uh, when I check here, I had negative 7. So it means I have to move. Remember, this is 11. This is 10. So I move by 11. So if I move uh, from negative 7 to make 11 upwards, then it means I need to complete the negative 7. Then I add the figure that adds 7 to become 11. And that is a 4. So means it will stop at positive 4. Or I can still go and use the equation for the shear force between, uh, uh, between the 2.5, between the 12.5 to 15. I can go up here and check on the equation. The equation is negative 1.6 pra, uh, negative 1.6 x plus 24. So I have uh, negative 1.6. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I just substitute in my values. Uh, negative 1.6 times 12.5 becomes negative 20 plus 24. I have 4. So I go to 4 and you know uh, it is uh, a, a, a straight line with a negative gradient. A straight line with a negative gradient. So I go to now the last point, which is the distance at x is equal to 15. So I put in that value negative 1.6 times 15. It becomes negative 24 plus 24 comes to 0. So finally, the shear force diagram becomes complete. We again go to the bending moment diagram and the bending moment diagram when you put in the values uh, we need to look at the expressions first of all we have the expressions the expressions are one we have uh, negative x squared out of two plus ten x then you have uh, negative three x then we have negative seven x then we have uh, negative 0 0.8 x squared plus 24 x minus 180. Uh, then I need to find the constants here. So the other one was negative uh, then 82.5 and the other one was 52.5. This is 5. So what you do, you also look at the, the first one is this. So if I look at uh, this equation, it is, the, it is uh, an equation of a parabola, but again, I know that uh, I need to put in values of x. So at x is equal to 0, the bending moment is 0. Then I proceed and uh, check what is happening, what is happening at uh, x is equal to 2.5. That is uh, in the center of the uniform ray distributed load between A and C. So what is happening there? What happens um, at that point, we have a maximum. You can just uh, differentiate this bending moment by uh, with respect to x. Then you will get, uh, of course, negative x plus 10x. Then you get the value of x, which will be 10. You substitute 10 in this, in this expression. So when you substitute 10 in this expression, you will find that your value is what is 21.875 i repeat for me to get this value here i i can look for i can even uh, maybe let me see if i put in a uh, 2.5 
Okay, I can put in 2.5 first of all and see what is happening. Maybe if I put in 2.5, 2.5 it will be negative times um, negative times 2.5, everything squared times 0 0.5, then plus 10 times. So I get 21.875. So if I get 21.875, that is the point, that, that is the value of the Benny moment when x is equal to 2.5. Then I proceed up to 5. Okay? So up to 5, I have uh, that expression ranging from 0 to 5. So up to 5, I need to get the maximum value of the Benny moment. So I find... Uh, for me, uh, to if I put in 5 by the way here, okay, if I put in 5, that becomes 5 squared. If I put in 5, it should give me 37.5, and that will be the end of that portion of the beam. So, at this point, I need to put in 5 here, it becomes uh, 25 uh, divided by 2, becomes negative uh, uh, 12.5 negative 12.5 then i add there uh, 50 so i get 37.5 kilonewton meter mm -hmm. i proceed between 5 and 7.5 there is uh, an expression which is um, an expression which is a uh, negative 3 x plus 52.5 okay so i put in my this is a, an equation of uh, a straight line uh, whose gradient is negative. So I want to substitute in the, uh, the I want to get the value of uh, the bending moment when x is equal to 5. So when I put in uh, x is equal to 5, then I will get this I will get this value of 37.5. I move. What about that x is equal to 7.5? I find I have 30 kilonewton meter. Mm -hmm. Then I proceed. If I put x is equal to 7.5 in this expression, I get 30. If I put in x is equal to, uh, this is now, at this point, this is uh, 12.5. So if I put in 12.5, I will find that myself, I have uh, something like negative 5. So let me substitute it in negative 7 times 12.5 then plus 82.5 I, I get negative 5 kilonewtons then from there I know the expression which is uh, ranging from 12.5 to 15 as negative 0 0.5 0 0.8 x squared plus 24 x minus 180 and when I substitute in these values I get what I get uh, first of all, at 12.5, I need I will get the negative 5 kilonewtons. Then at 15, I will get. So this is the shear force and bending moment diagrams for this particular beam, as it has been required. Thank you. Thank you so. Much.